Well, to discuss Robin Williams and his legacy is the comedian and writer Eddie Izzard and from New York, the performer and artist Amanda Palmer. Eddie Izzard, first of all, you knew him well. What do you think was the source of his genius? Um, I think he must have got it through his parents. It's, it's genetic. I, I think some of these talents, comedy tends to come through parents and stuff. Um, he, he had that and there's some nurture in that. He just pushed it and made it work. We, when I was at um, stand-up, workshop learning to do stand-up because I only did sketches but he was down there were different types of stand-ups you could be you could choose one and one was the sort of godlike genius mm. era and that was the Robin Williams you can head to that but only if you're crazy you head to that one. But all through this career he often uh, he, he, he gets headed back to stand-up all the time what was it that about the, this need for this great engagement with the audience he loved that immediate engagement with the audience. Well he he did love it. I, I wondered why. I, I actually think he could have done it more because I think what happens in America, if you, if you get successful mm -hmm. in comedy, you will go into a television series or a film series and that becomes key and it's a different, it's, it's a different thing to stand up. Mm -hmm. So he, I feel he did occasional uh, stand up tours after taking off into such a, uh, such a huge way, but not, not all the time. It was, he was so wonderful at it. I, I don't actually want, know why he didn't come back to it more. What do you think was the source of his uh, vulnerability? Often I think when you see expressions that he used in lots of films, he just looked so kind of sympathetic towards the other characters. He had this incredible kind of warmth. Well, I mean, that, that, was, that was just Robin. He was, he was a nice guy. I, when I first met him on a film, I, he was just very welcoming. And, and I pushed, I said, can, I, can you watch my video? And he watched it immediately, which was, which was very, Oh, you would expect a, a lot of pullback on that, but he was just, he's just an, a decent person. And for a lot of us, he was right up there and it's, it's too sad. And he was, it's a strange way, nurturing of other people's talent, but needed a lot of nurturing himself. In the end, that is what obviously had happened. Well, I, I don't want to get into that, but you know, depression is, is clinical and some people have it and some people don't. And, it just, it's a disease, it, it's, you know, um, he was brilliant and he, and it would have been wonderful he could, if he could have gone on. Um, Amanda Palmer, um, I think I'm right in saying that you tweeted last night that what you wanted was an emergency screening quickly of a Robin Williams film for you all. I think it, I think it was Good Morning Vietnam. Oh, it was Dead Poets Society. Oh, it was Dead Poets actually. for you. I mean, when, when, how did you first encounter him? Was it years ago? It was, I mean, it was years ago. It, it feels like he was one of those people who raised me in the 80s because mm -hmm. I was stationed in front of television watching his movies from before I can remember. I think the first one, I mean, there was Mork and Mindy, but I think the first one was Moscow on the Hudson. Yeah. And it has not been mentioned. And then he was Moscow just always there. Yeah. Moscow and the Hudson was absolutely a brilliant film that hasn't been mentioned much today, and I thought he was wonderful in that. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's like he's been such a permanent part of the landscape. I was, so, uh, I was so shocked to hear that he was gone because, because he's always there. And of course, yeah. now, of course, the Twitter reaction has been phenomenal and you are, uh, you know, are a avid on Twitter. And you get the sense of just how many people's lives he touched. Yeah, so uh, one of those beautiful things happened today where um, a lot of people were talking about Dead Poets Society because that was just one of those films with moments that resonated so deeply with people, especially because of the suicide in the film. and. Um, one of my fans sent me a picture of himself standing on a desk with, um, with the hashtag, oh, captain, my captain, and I sent one back um, with myself standing on a desk in the studio that I was recording in, and it turned into this beautiful viral tribute with like hundreds that, of people though. taking pictures of themselves standing on desks. Yeah. And you got a sense also just from looking at the comments, you know, different films really touched and changed people at different times. One of my fans uh, tweeted about being on the brink of suicide himself when he saw Dead Poet Society and said that that film pulled him back from the edge. So the, the profound irony of it all mm. is, is heavy. You got a sense, uh, Eddie Azar, that he delighted in some of his roles. Mrs. Doubtfire was just a role made for adults as well as children. 
Yeah, I mean, when he's doing comedy, he would do a thing which I'm not sure if all of us comedians <laughs> do, but he, he was making himself laugh. I'm pretty sure he was performing. He was the first person in his audience um, when I did this film. Uh, with him, the one film I did with him, Jared Depardieu was in it, and he was in front of him, ad libbing, and and so I started ad libbing with him, which sort of blew my mind. And Jared Depardieu was watching us and just going, "This <laughs> is really weird." I don't know what he was thinking. But, but apparently, <laughs> even in Aladdin, when he was playing the genie, even though it was an animation, he was ad libbing. I oh, know, but anima animation is all filmed beforehand, so. Yes. That's what he would have Locked. done. He would have just gone off, and they said the script would have been here, and he would have gone off to Seven Ways to Sunday. <laughs> seven Ways to Sunday. What influence do you think he had on other performers and people like you? Well, huge. Um, it, it was, it was immense, immensely huge. You can't actually try and be someone. You can't say I want to be that person. You can, you can add little bits onto your own style. But my style was more sort of Woody Allen with um, Billy Connolly mm -hmm. and and Richard Pryor mixed in, but. It's just that he did hit this godlike genius place of being able to do anything, and it was political, and it was fast, and it was impressions, and he would run through the audience, which was more like street performing, which was unusual for, for stand-ups to do. They don't usually move off the stage. Um, he just had this ability to take a room and, um, and take it to the stars, really. You mentioned you know, Richard Pryor, you mentioned Connolly. I mean, where would you rank him on the kind of, you know, the kind of pantheon of... Well, we, we should never, he, he's, just, he's just right up there. I mean, it's, um, um, you know, uh, ne there should never be number ones in creative things, but he's in the top ten of all time, um, and maybe the top five. It's just, it is rather tragic. I didn't want to come in here and do this, but I thought, I was discussing this with Steve Coogan, whether I should do it, because it looks, sometimes it looks like everyone jumps on telly and no. talks about people, but I just wanted to say, uh, we're going to miss him. <laughs>